For the past year, the FBI has been carrying out the largest federal investigation in U.S. history. I've been reporting on far-right and extremist movements for a long time, and it's been remarkable to see just how much Americans' narratives about what happened on January 6th have completely diverged. So far, the FBI has charged more than 720 men and women who attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. And here are some of the most well-known cases of these rioters and where they are now. You may remember the so-called QAnon shaman, Jacob Angeli. He was among the first of hundreds of rioters who breached the building that day. In November, he was given a 41-month jail term after pleading guilty to obstructing an official proceeding. At his hearing, prosecutors said that his now famous criminal acts have made him the public face of the Capitol riot. Robert Palmer, who traveled to DC from Florida, cheered on the mob on January 6th. Then he moved in front of the crowd and hurled a fire extinguisher and a plank at police officers. He pleaded guilty in October to assaulting law enforcement officers and was sentenced to more than five years in federal prison. This is the longest sentence given so far. He fought back tears in the courtroom when he told the judge that he was really ashamed of his behavior. I realized that we, meaning Trump supporters, were lied to by those that at the time had great power, meaning the sitting president as well as those acting on his behalf. Eric Manchel went viral as zip tie guy after the attack. The 30 year old came to the US Capitol with his mother that day. Now they're both currently out on house arrest awaiting trial for charges of trespassing at the Capitol and for obstructing the congressional confirmation of Biden's victory. Joshua James, a US Army veteran who was wounded in Iraq and received a Purple Heart, is facing several serious charges for his participation on January 6th. When I went to James' hometown in rural Alabama last year, his friends and neighbors told me they didn't think he had done anything wrong. They described him as a hero, as a family man, as a patriot. And they didn't know what we found out later in our reporting, which is that he had gotten mixed up with an extremist militia known as the Oath Keepers, and which usually kind of targets law enforcement and former military. At least one in 10 of the people who stormed the Capitol that day had some affiliation with the military. Every day, more people are still getting arrested and charged for the participation on January 6th. The FBI says they're still looking for 350 people who committed violent acts at the Capitol that day. Recent polls show that many Americans are just ready to move on from the investigation, and a significant number of them see nothing wrong with what the rioters did. And they're sympathetic to the cause of a lot of these insurrectionists when they probably weren't a year ago, because they see the FBI investigation as a witch hunt that's just throwing a lot of these patriots in jail. And so security analysts and extremists and experts say they're worried that this is just radicalizing way more Americans than would usually have access to these ideas. And that while there probably won't be another January 6th at the US Capitol, these people are more likely to show up at local school board meetings, outside health officials' homes, at state capitals, and kind of espouse the same idea that political violence is okay.